evening i would like to <coughs> resume those studies so that it may be a blessing to many who used to listen it in the previous lesson we have been studying about the concept of <coughs> discipline in the assembly how a christian assembly has to take up the disciplinary actions against an erring brother or sister was our concern and in that connection we have made up the various principles in relation to the disciplinary action to be taken in a congregation i stated first of all that the disciplinary actions should not be carried out by one person alone it must be carried out unanimously for example if there is something that is very seriously noticed in a congregation by the behaviorism of a brother or a sister whose testimony would definitely spoil the the general testimony of the congregation before the public and within the church in such situation we have to take uh a uh, uh, very actually <coughs> actually the discipline reaction against uh, such a uh, uh, brother the thing is that we are standing as representatives on behalf of our lord jesus christ and the word of god the word of god says the church has to administer disciplinary action upon its erring members whenever such a need arises what we ought to do is the disciplinary action should not be carried out by one person but it should be carried out unanimously one good in the end chapter 5 verse 4 and 5 the reason for such a disciplinary action to be taken is spoken here in this passage as if one member suffer pain the whole member suffer pain if one member suffer pain the whole members suffer pain so therefore <clears throat> we need to take up the action immediately binding by the word of god and here <clears throat> the word of god says we have to take that it is that it is very necessary for us to take up the action as recommended in the word of god the word of god very specifically tells us that it is mandatory for us to take the disciplinary actions actually by the word of god and wherefore it says that uh, whenever uh, the discipline reaction is taken the assembly or the congregation unanimously ought to take that disciplinary action upon its members who are erred or erring and then we have 
the second point that second point also i emphasized in the previous class the church has to take the disciplinary actions only on its members that means those who are born again baptized having fellowship with the local congregation and uh, such members if they found with uh, any doctrinal or practical aspects in their lives which would mock or which would defy the general testimony of the congregation in such situation we have to take appropriate disciplinary action upon its member but remember the church can take action only of its members not outside the church 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 12 and 13 Paul says the outsiders God will judge the outsiders God will judge but those who are inside the judgment has to be from the almighty God based on the word of God and third principle is mentioned there the disciplinary action should have a definite purpose that means whenever the church is taking an appropriate action against an erring brother or a sister the church must have a definite purpose behind taking any disciplinary actions the ultimate aim all discipline must be taken for the common good of the assembly that means any disciplinary action taken against a brother or sister towards the wayward lifestyle of that brother or his false teachings of the word of God or making frictions which would eventually result in factions in the assembly we have to take appropriate disciplinary actions but the action taken must bring a common good for the assembly the ultimate purpose is to correct the Uh, the heard one and uh, reinstate him into the fellowship it is not that we are we are not taking the action or disciplinary action against a brother so that he should be destroyed eventually but with the intention that he should be repented of his failures or his shortcomings and then be reinstated to fellowship that must be our primary aim and fourthly it says that disciplinary actions be taken only after the wrong was proved beyond the suspicion no member is to be disciplined based on some hearsay or of any anything as such the bible says the disciplinary action to be taken on sound reasons that means it must be beyond the suspicion no door of suspicion should be to be opened against the person who is disciplined two or three faithful witnesses are uh, uh, a must that meant there should be two or three witnesses to prove the wrong committed by the disciplined if somebody is bringing some allegations about a brother or sister a disciplinary, disciplinary action should not be carried out based on the hearsay or allegations rather it must be it must be soundly proved by two or three witnesses that is the biblical pattern in the book of leviticus chapter 13 47 to 50 and 14 33 to 15 the chapter is particularly speaking about the uh, the person with the leprosy was reported if a person like yamb was reported with a leprosy symptom the news should be brought to the attention of the high priest who was the examiner to that patient in those days when he examined him if he is a uh, uh, may if he was made sure that the person was with a leprosy then he has to shut him in the house for 7 days he is not permitted to come out or to have any communion with uh, the general public and after 7 days he has to again 
re-exam the leper and found he is made holy, that means he is cured, then he has to make a proclamation as to the, the leper is now clean and holy. So this is the principle of declaration to, uh, declaring a person to be le leprosy patient and a person how to be declared as holy, that means completely healed. If anyone carries a news about someone, that is what the, the importance goes to, if anyone carries a news about someone, must endure the news thoroughly. And any discipline should be initiated only after collecting, collecting all credible evidences. That means when we take the disciplinary action against the person about whom a bad report was brought to us, we have to collect all the necessary or available evidences. Then after, then after we have to go for uh, taking the appropriate disciplinary actions on him. Otherwise, uh, the result will be badly uh, infected the assembly and its testimony. And finally, it says that those initiated discipline whose life must be beyond a uh, question. That means those who are taking disciplinary action in a church, their life must be beyond reproach. A person who has violated the fundamentals of the doctrines of the word of God is sitting on the chair to execute disciplinary actions upon another erring brother. It is not good, the word of God says. So the person who takes the disciplinary action or one who executes the disciplinary action must be beyond question or reproaches. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. There, there should be spiritual and exemplary. Numbers chapter 19, verse 18. Those who are taking the disciplinary actions upon the erring one, those people must be spiritual and exemplary. He who sprinkles the water upon the people must be holy. That means, unless the person is made holy, he is not permitted or authorized to sprinkle the holy water upon the defiled people. And this can be connected to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. The old leaven is to be removed. Paul says, therefore, put off the old leaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. That speaks about the wickedness. Whereas in verse 13, we have spoken about the wicked person. So, in chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians verse 7, he speaks about the wickedness that they are intuited in the congregation, whereas verse number 13 speaks about that wicked person, cast him off or put him or hand him over into the hands of Satan so that his soul may be redeemed in the days of Jesus Christ. Three different kind of discipline in the New Testament is admonished three different kind of disciplinary actions is admonished in the New Testament. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verse, verses 15 to 17, the, these principles are established even before the church was, in fact was established in the history. These threefold uh, instructions concerning the disciplinary action taken on a brother or sister is found in Matthew chapter 18 verse 15 to 17 where the first principle the offended one should seek settlement primarily first to the offender. So in a in a church when there, there arise a problem the, mostly it will be between two brothers or two sisters. The one, one is the offended one and the other one is the offender. The offender has to seek the reconciliation to the offender is the first principle. For example, if I am offended by a brother publicly or in the church, I should seek the settlement with the offender. And the Bible says that the offender is yielded to you 
then you have gained the brother. And the offender still stands stubborn, the second uh, phase of the principle is given here. You have to take two or three witnesses along with you and then persuade the offender to convince him of his offense. And this time also if he is not convinced and he is unwilling to yield himself to the offended, then the final settlement is mentioned. That is take the, the matter to the congregation. Let the matter be brought to the congregation. And then the assembly in turn should what? Unanimously seek a reconciliation with the offender. When the offender was unwilling to yield to the offended, two or three witnesses are to be taken along with him and persuade him towards reconciliation and if the reconciliation attempt was frustrated, the third principle of obligation it says, it should be brought to the, the attention of the entire congregation. Unfortunately, today, this is what is happening is on the opposite of this principle, which would dearly grieve the Holy Spirit of God who has given us the threefold principles of uh, settlement of an issue. So listen here. Instead of approaching the person directly or taking two or three witnesses along with him, straight away the person comes to the congregation, stands there and then utter evil words and the false communication against the other brother. This is utterly foolishness. It is contradicting the very principles of the word of God and it, brought, it, it brings about reproaches. Uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ as the person deprives not only really the, the, offend, uh, the offender but the entire congregation. So first principle is seek personal reconciliation and if it is failed take two or three witnesses along with and that is to fail then finally bring the matter to the assembly for the public attention and then the assembly unanimously seek reconciliation to the offender. Still, the offender does not yield himself to the church. Bible says as final that he should be excommunicated from the fellowship and be considered as a Gentile and a tax collector. This is what Matthew's Gospel chapter 18 verses 15 to 17 teaches us. Discipline is also a solemn warning. Why should we take the discipline in the congregation? The disciplinary action is also a solemn warning. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15 The word disorderly, disorderly spoken in the when 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15 indicate the people who do not obey the authority appointed by God in the church. There are certain authorities appointed by God in the church. Here when I take up this subject, I myself is confused. Because 95% of the local churches of Avids, in these days especially in Kerala, Kerala, especially in central Kerala, the people who are on the office of the chair of eldership are not God appointed or God ordained servants of God. If a person is appointed by God that he shall never become a quarrelsome person. I have had some bad experiences in the congregation where I was serving and ministering the Lord and fellowshipping. One brother I still remember that he in his blood there is a spirit of contention and strife. This I have been seeing, not only myself, that many of the brethren for the past 18 years I have been worshipping at this place. And I have noticed this brother, along with another person, always bringing this calumny upon others and introducing strife and contentions 
and try to dissolve the assembly, dissolve the hearts of the people between and uh, bring about the uncomfortable situation in the worship time. This should not be recommended. And such practices are to be condemned thoroughly once for all. So those who are not qualified, that means those people who are practically or doctrinally disqualified to take up the office of an elder, made himself an elder either by external force or by internal affections of relatives and friends. Necessarily that person is not been appointed by the Holy Spirit of God. Church has no obligation to obey such a people who falsely taken up the offices. But uh, there are God appointed servants of God in the congregation. And uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15 thoroughly tells us those who are disorderly in the assembly, who do not keep an orderliness, who do not obey God's word, who do not obey the God-appointed authorities in the church. Such people, what, what, what should we do? They should be indicated. Public rebuke is advised against the sins of an elder. Suppose an elder has committed sin. Public rebuke is uh, is uh, against the sin of the elder. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 19 and 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 11 to 14. We know that when Paul went to uh, Antioch, Peter was there. And uh, till the time that Paul reached there that he was having uh, communication with the Gentile believers and having uh, food with them. But since the moment they heard that Paul was coming down to Antioch. He stopped eating with the Gentile believers. It was a double standard, double attitude. When Paul came there, he knew that this was the, the mental stature of Peter and he was showing the double attitude uh, among the believers there. And so Paul came, Paul realized that it was a serious sin and a disorderliness. Therefore, he <coughs> rebuked Peter <coughs> in front of the brethren. And he never considered Peter was the chief of the apostles. He rebuked him because he noticed fault with him. So sin is a reproach to God and ruining the testimony of the church. Therefore, sin, sin is actions against the truth. Peter was acting against the truth while he was in Antioch. He was acting against the truth. Sin is an acting against the truth. So he, Peter was acting against the truth when he was in Antioch. Because of that Paul rebuked Peter for his faults. Believer's sin is revealed same way. Peter's sin, this is to be publicly rebuked. Why the sins are, of the, the saints are publicly rebuked? The reason is, for those who are present there, it is for their fear's sake. Those that makes factions and those that are disorderly in their works must be taken disciplinary actions and publicly rebuked. The first group, this, those who are working disorderly, the first groups of groups are people who are sluggards do not work with their hand. They do not seek their own but interfere on others' things. They keep on interfering on others' things. I have seen some people coming to the church not to worship the Almighty God through Jesus Christ by the help of the Holy Spirit but to observe and examine others whom they don't like. How they behave, what they do, how they sit down, and how they respond, how many minutes or times or hours they remind, all these are just as if having higher authority that these people are examining. They are coming to the church not to worship the Almighty God, but to observe and examine the privacy of others. 
is very dangerous. So it says that the first group, the disorderly ones, they are sluggard people. They, they, they do not seek their own, but uh, interferes in the affairs of others. They do not work on the end for their needs. They do not work with their hand and end for their needs. Such matters of discipline, Paul absolutely, he was free because he used to work with his own hand, not only for, the, for his needs, but also for the needs of those who accompanied him in the service of Jesus Christ. So, we read, he worked with his own hands for his needs as well as for the needs of those who were within in the mission activities. Acts chapter 20, verses 33 to 35. And then our second one, those that make factions. There are people who make constantly friction the congregation which are finally results in factions. So our, we need to avoid such one. Avoid the perverted ones. Titus 3 verse 10 to 11. Avoid the perverted ones. They influence us. They influence the believer against truth to their side. The perverted are influencing the believers and they turn the believers to their side. In such a way, the group is, is formed in the local congregation. And then keep such one away from fellowship. It's a stronger act. Keep such one away from fellowship. It's a stronger action which is commanded here. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 2, John 10, 11. Anyone who denies the doctrine of Christ should be should be kept away from fellowship. 1 John chapter 10, uh, uh, John's Gospel chapter 10 verse 11. Anyone who denies the doctrine of Christ should be kept away from fellowship. The action taken against the wicked one in Corinthians has threefold faces. We know the person who was having his uh, father's wife as his own wife and indulged in a, a, an immorality in the church at Corinth. Three phases of his action is reported there. Number one, ecclesiastically, he was excommunicated from fellowship. Ecclesiastically speaking, he was excommunicated from fellowship. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 3. And then spiritually speaking, he was handed to Satan. Ecclesiastically, he was excommunicated from fellowship and then spiritually speaking, he was handed to Satan that his spirit may be saved in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, socially speaking, chapter 5 verse 11, the instruction is being given not to take food such ones. Any person who involves, involved his lifestyle with the immoral people or immoral way with the such and more, such one, we should not even take food with those people. Anyone who is practicing immorality, there are so many items of immorality mentioned in the New Testament, which the believers are forbidden, forbidden to practice in their life. If anyone is involved in it, we should keep ourselves away from such people and uh, we should not even take food with them. One more thing I have to mention and then stop. Handing down to Satan, the final stage, stage of disciplinary action. And it says, and when the assembly has made the attempt to uh, uh, reconcile the believer and bring him back to fellowship by the repentance, creating repentance in him and if he is frustrated with, we have to finally handing him to Satan. The believer who is handed to Satan does not belong to Satan. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 5 But one who is saved belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ. So definitely he belongs to the Lord but, order, uh, but he was handed over that he should be repented in course of time when he is handed to Satan for afflictions in his flesh. It may be diseases or mental pain, or sorrows, or difficulties, or financial scarcities, or social uh, reproaches that he may have to confront in his day-to-day -day life, whatever it might be. 
There are so many faces as a God. It. So finally he should be repented and be reinstated is the aim. Until then he should be handed in the hands of Satan. 1 John chapter 2 verse 2 says Christ's attitude towards sinning brother is clearly stated. If anyone sin, Christ pleads for him. That means if a person commits sin, the possibility of a believer to commit any sort of sin is not being uh, uh, not been uh, disregarded here. Rather it says that there is possibility for a believer to commit any kinds of sin. But Bible says that we have an advocate before our Father in Heaven who is actually pleading on our behalf. So <clears throat> our doctrinal stand, our practical stand should be very correct in front of God and the fellow believers. A brother is not supposed to be kept away from fellowship for a long period of time. Even if he take taken disciplinary action toward any brother, that he should not be out of fellowship for a long period of time, especially due to cultivated suspicion. He failed to take actions in case of want of sufficient evidence. He must be left in fellowship until the time Lord will convince him. So somebody has reported uh, something about a brother, but uh, if he failed to collect the ample evidences uh, towards the case that we have been reported, then we should not hurriedly put take him out of the fellowship and throw him out the congregation. We let him in the congregation and until the time God will have to convince him and will bring him back to repentance. The method of discipline administrator is also mentioned. Always with a precaution that we too, that means the people who are taking the discipline reaction, should have this awareness that we too are men, men are succumb to temptation. Galatians chapter 6 verse, 6 verse 1. Those who are taking disciplinary action against an erring brother must understand that he himself is a man succumbed to temptation. The disciplining step must be taken in the spirit of humility and holiness, not in the haughty spirit or with the attitude of retaliation. And secondly, discipline must be taken with all seriousness. No partiality is recommended. Even if the wrong belongs to a family, that means the one who has committed wrong may be directly belonging to a family, but no such a facial partiality is to be shown to him. Rather, impartially, we have to administer disciplinary action. After all, the major purpose of taking this disciplinary action is to bring in the hearing brother back to fellowship by means of repentance. A believer should not disseminate or propagate another believer's fault and failures. There are people in this age. I still remember when someone from the northern part of Kerala came as some laborers in a congregation. They were trust workers. That is trust workers of the, the houses and buildings with the aluminium and iron, uh, iron, aluminium and iron. And when they came to work on a Hindu's house, some of our people, they opened their mouth only twice to say lies and to eat food. Conveyed them very badly about a fellow believer who is fellowship with them. This is a known case to me. And then those who heard this tale from their mouth began to behave the other person about whom he, they heard in such a negative way. So no believer should disseminate any types of calumny or allegations against a believer to others. All discipline alone in the church should be kept secret. No way make the law the outsiders be done. 
we should never make the door open outside it be known the disciplinary actions a church has taken against a brother brother who was there i hope by this today's class that the the title of discipline in the congregation is uh, completed here and god willing in the next class i would like to handle the church and finance how it should be collected and uh, operated according to the word of god may god makes this class as a blessing to you all may his name be glorified in his service evangelist yes thomas from today thank you